Um, here we go. So, um, all right. So, welcome to um, the Fine Art Film Festival, a second uh, Q and A with uh, director Emily Bridges and <coughs> co-star um, Bo Bridges um, in acting the first six lessons. It's a uh, project that a lot of our judges have found really wonderful. Um, they brought it to our attention and we decided we wanted to talk to the principal people who made the movie about it. Um, one thing that uh, I really enjoyed about the movie was that it, um, as a producer director myself, it gave me some insights that I hadn't known about the origin of, of uh, the Stanislavski method in the United States, which it can be in some ways attributed to uh, Richard Boleslavsky, who um, uh, Richard um, was a director in his own right. He directed things like The Garden of Allah uh, with Charles Boyer and Marlena Dietrich. He was, he, he ran a school in New York and his students were um, Lee Strasberg, Stell Adler and Harold, Harold Klerman mm -hmm. who started, went on to start the um, group theater, which was in the first American ensemble using the Stanislavski method. And I believe that I've got that history correct, if not correct me, but, um, but I do find that learning about this, this man and what he did, uh, and he died quite, year, quite young around age 47, but he uh, made lots and lots of movies and did a lot of great things, including bringing uh, acting the first six lessons into print, which um, is the origin of this movie. So um, without further ado, I'm gonna introduce Emily Bridges and Bo Bridges. And um, Emily, I'm gonna start with you and ask you, um, how did you um, how did you acquire the book? How did that become part of your family story? And what, what led you to develop this project um, as a result? How did, how did that process go? And feel free to talk about whatever you feel. Yeah. Sure, so the, the genesis of this project really started with uh, my grandfather, who's it's up there. <laughs> it's right behind us. Um, and he, this book was very, very important to, to him. And uh, he had given it to his children who gave it to their children. It's, it's a book that I grew up with. And um, the vocabulary of the book became sort of unique to our, our family. It, I think it uh, is a way that we relate to each other, to acting, to life. And um, so when I was a senior in college, you know, we picked it up again and I was a theater major at Fordham University in, in New York. And, um, and so I, it was back in my brain again, you know, after, after having read it when I was a young teen. And the summer after I came back from college, um, staying with my parents, you know, uh, we just started working on it. We, I, I typed the whole book out in a word document and gave it to my dad I think for Christmas that year and said you know what do you think about doing this as a play because we'd always talked about how you know it's written the way that it's written is kind of like a Socratic dialogue between the teacher and the student and so we first just started by editing it way down and then kind of fleshing out the characters so it's more of a narrative and we developed it originally for um Theater West in Los Angeles was the first place that we did it and we toured it around uh, quite a bit. And the way that the, the play went is that we always introduced ourselves at the beginning and kind of talked about how we came to the book. And at the end of each performance, we always did a talk back because it kind of, to contextualize it within our, our family history, um, sort of, made the experience richer for, for us as performers and, and hopefully for our audience as well. And then, um, Dad, do you want to talk about when, when you were speaking at Ringling and when we first got connected with David? Yeah, and then um, I went to uh, Ringling College uh, to uh, give a master's class in directing there and met David Shapiro, who was uh, my host at that time. And uh, when I was finished, with that experience, he asked me if I had any projects that I'd like to make into a film because uh, 
Ringling was looking to make some movies there. He had just built two or three uh, really wonderful stages, sound stages there, state of the art. And they had just come to completion. And I gave him uh, acting the first six lessons. I said, this is a published play that Sam French that my daughter and I did uh, about eight years ago. Uh, I think it'd make a wonderful movie. And he really liked the idea, but then he brought in the component of the documentary because he said, what really fascinates me when you tell me about this, he says, I love the play, but I also am really curious about your family's involvement in this book, that's kind of unique, you know, to have one book be that important through generations of a family. And how did that all happen? So he suggested bringing in uh, interviews with our family, which uh, her older brother, uh, Casey, uh, who's a documentary filmmaker, he he did all the interviews. And, uh, and then it was Emily's job as director to figure out how to put all these pieces these together. different pieces together into telling a story and yeah. I think she did a, a wonderful job thank you and and yeah it was sort of that is how the um the talk back portion of the play which was just the two of us sort of manifested in the the film world is that's that's how my my intent was for the audience to feel a little bit like you're sitting around a dinner table with our family kind of you know talking over each other and and stuff. But when we uh, when we actually made the film, a really uh, unique thing that Suncor Productions, this is uh, David Shapiro's company, brought to us is that they, uh, it was a bit of a life imitating art situation because they developed this really unique program where uh, they paired professional filmmakers with some of the students that were attending Ringling College. And so we got this really wonderful opportunity to work with some up and coming uh, movie artist folks um, who were just wonderful. And, and I think for this piece in particular, it, um, it was such a great match because the, the sort of themes of mentorship, of, of learning from the, the incoming generation, you know, um, was able to sort of play itself out in real time, which was a, a very special thing. And as, as the old guy in the group, I learned a lot from these young kids, I'm telling you. They come out of the box nowadays, really just loaded for bear. They, they have such an understanding of all things technical, a lot that I don't, I'm not aware of. And uh, so it was fun being in there with, with those folks. It was great. Yeah, I noticed during the movie, um, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of moments where you do feel like um, you are sort of inside the set in a way, mm -hmm. because the movie is referring to itself a lot um, in terms of like, okay, we are in a lesson, we are in a in a moment, um, and then the moment where there's the drawing behind you guys, and then the scene is painted behind you guys is like a you know, what they may have referred to previously as breaking the wall, it's kind of really nice because it, um, because it, it says, okay, well, you know, we are making a movie about making movies, but it's about acting and the, about, about, you know, getting inside each other's, you know, heart in a way. Um, uh, there's a lot of interesting moments I want to mention, but, um, I think it might be interesting to start with how, um, you know, uh, your father, I mean, your, uh, Bo, your father, Lloyd, was somebody who I watched um, as a kid. I watched all of his stuff. I mean, I'm 60, so my, you know, I'd sit around with, you know, black and white stuff on TV and, and that when I was young and, and, you know, he was always cool to watch and stuff. And so what was it like to get, I mean, I'm gonna, I would like you both to answer the question, like what it was it like to get the book from him and how did it feel? And then Emily, what was it like to get the book from Bo? I'm assuming you got it from him or if, did you get it from your grandfather or what? Just curious. No, my, I, my, my dad gave me the book when I was uh, probably 12, I think. And Bo, what yeah. was it like to you? Yeah, I got the book when I was about 16. In fact, we have a picture uh, somewhere, we Emily and I uh, 
uh, re oh, yeah. created the same, the same picture that my uh, my I did, took with my dad with the book. I'm reading it when I was 16, mm -hmm. and it was uh, very important to me because it was the only book on acting my dad ever gave me, which. I enjoyed, uh, and it was my kind of book. It's a little thin book, you know, <laughs> a big, long, wordy thing. And also Boleslavsky himself, a uh, great writer. I'd almost call him a poet. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the words in the screenplay are his. I think most of them are. It was us just kind of honing it down and, and you know, creating it. Movie yeah, I think I think we probably drove people nuts with the stage directions that we kept in the in the draft of the actual script for the film because it's all this beautiful flowery descriptive, descriptive kind of stuff, language yeah. that's going. Everyone's going, okay, what does this mean? <laughs> going, well, it's, it's for us. And and uh, yeah, so uh, it was very eventful when my dad gave it to me. He was my teacher as well, and a very demanding teacher, kind of a perfectionist himself. Uh, and, uh, you know, didn't hold back. I mean, he demanded, you know, he said, look, you know, you want to tell the truth. He said, it may only be your truth, but you have to be true when you're speaking lines. You can't just yap like that and let it fly into the air. You have to believe it so that your audience will see it as the truth. Uh, I remember him saying that a lot. and. And I think that lesson is part of uh, part of the story uh, of acting the mm -hmm. first six lessons, getting to the truth, you know, your own truth. Yeah, I think that that's that's set up pretty pretty well, and um, scene that you play together, uh, which extends itself throughout the movie and is broken up by documentary interviews um, in a in an almost chapter by chapter way, which is very interesting. And so you can almost drop into the movie at a, if you're an acting person, person who's learning about acting or studying acting, you can almost drop into the movie at certain parts and find something you like. So um, Emily, I, I'm just curious, what was it like to direct your father? Oh, it was fun. Um, no, it's, it's, it's fascinating because this project has now been something that we have played around with in one form or another for over a decade. And so when we were first sort of wrestling with these characters and writing it together, I think that, um, you know, being in my early 20s, I had definitely feeling something more to prove and, and we would kind of, you know, wrestle over you know oh we need to cut this no we can't cut that you know that kind of stuff and um and this time around it was it was I, I had such a feeling of gratitude just to be doing it you know um to be together and uh on set together all day and and we had come to know these characters so well um that it was it was really, really special just to, to be together on set. And, you know, my, my dad, I've come to know is right a lot of the time. So <laughs> if I well, ever one thing, came to one... him with something like, what do you think about this? And, but what's kind of amazing is, is when it came down to it, most of the time he would say, what do you think, <laughs> you know? And um, so it's, I, I think that our relationship with the book and, and how we approach it together has, has evolved. And my, Over time. my wife, Wendy, was very important to the experience being uh, completed because uh, I had my grandson, Clark. Mm -hmm. How old was he then? So Clark was about nine months old when we when we shot the film. And so he was on set and, uh, and my wife had my to watch him. Awesome. My in-laws were amazing. Yeah, um, so that, that was uh, important. Yeah. So, so, so um, one of the things that I noticed about the performance between you and Emily, Bo, is that you are, um, of course, the relationship is teacher to creature, I guess you want to call it. Right. But, uh, but, um, but the interesting thing is that um, there's, there's a, a respect for your wisdom that comes through in the, in the dialogue that's um, 
th that's and and there's a you know there's the w the willingness to 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 listen, which is key to any good performance. But mm -hmm. you, what I really enjoyed was how I was able to sort of recognize what I had heard with you know how you used Emily how you used his reaction shots to key in you know to remind us of what something you may have just said or whatever was really nice um I think there was a huge amount of support given to each other which I really enjoyed watching and um and that's got to be very gratifying um as for a for a parent uh, child relationship um because they're not always great in the world, you know? And you guys are really um, lucky that you've been able to develop one, have one that's so strong. And that's what's really remarkable about this particular story in general. If you look, take a look at the whole thing, you know, all of the multi-generational acting families have not been, shall we say, quite as cohesive as yours <laughs> might be. And so, so that's from the history of Hollywood in general. And so that's really, really great to see, uh, really gratifying actually. So um, one of the things that I wanted to mention was that, and I sort of, I'm trying to dive, dive into this in a way that's giving you guys the freedom to move around, but um, a lot of times the movie, in this movie, the action that you guys are doing- I'm so sorry, just frozen. You frozen, we missed you. Am I better now? Your question. Uh, oh, the you are in a very thoughtful frozen position. <laughs> I, am I still frozen? Oh no, I'm not frozen Can you anymore. Hear us? Oh, there. oh. our our internet is all right. I think. Yeah, mine's fine. Mine looks just fine. Yeah, you're frozen there. Um, oh, now you're back. You're back. Oh, okay, okay, great, fantastic. Well, you know, the ghost in the machine, of course. Oh, oh. So let me do the question again. I'm so sorry. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. Ahead. I don't know. Who knows what it's from? Um, so often in this movie, so what I really enjoy about the movie and felt was really interesting is that, as I mentioned before, is that the action um, so often refers to itself. It's like, for example, mm -hmm. in that one scene where you guys do the walk and talk and you say to, to, the, to your teacher, well, now we've just acted a whole scene as we've walked through you know so it's it's really interesting to see that play itself out um as an audience member so that must have been fun to include those kinds of elements that that was fun that was probably the wildest day of filming though because we were using you know a green screen a huge big green screen and just to sort of orient ourselves, you know, we would we would walk and then we'd back up and we'd do the same thing again. And, you know, knowing that it was all going to be cut together. Um, but it was it, that was definitely strange. You've, you've done a bit more green screen work than I have. But yeah. but it was um, it was very interesting because on stage, you know, it's another challenge because you kind of you don't want to look like you're just doing laps in a circle so you kind of wander and pause and wander and pause and you know and, and this was sort of the the film version of that one thing i had to kind of watch out for that i remember from my father because uh, i directed my dad in several movies and and i i uh there were times that i felt my father he was acting with me in the movie but in the scenes, I could see in his eyes that he was judging my <laughs> <laughs> and I had to be careful because I felt that urge sometimes when watching my daughter because I'm her, you know, one of her teachers and, you know, I've, I've directed her and things and I'm watching her and I remember this thing with my dad one time, a movie we did together, a father and son in it and my dad loved working with family. He started that whole thing. We, we've made I don't know. So many, many films. Like yeah, I, I you said remember, over a hundred or over something. Over a hundred films together as family, which is pretty With unique. different different members different of our family members, not collaborating all, not together. Not all of the same, but you know, different members. I counted them up. But anyway, so I'm doing this movie with my dad, father and son, having an argument, and he slaps me in the in the argument, 
and then I push him up against a, a post. And he showed me, you know, because I was quite young and he worked with me about how to slap on the meaty part of the face, avoid the bone so you don't hurt. It's not going to hurt you that much. Wait for the contact and then go and everything. And so I'm really pissed off at him in the scene before he slaps me. And I'm, you know, he's a big guy and I'm looking up at him and I'm giving it to him. And I see him looking at me and he's judging me. And I can tell he thinks I'm falling emotionally short of where I should be. And he just whacked me so freaking hard. I guess he wanted to juice me up. And I just boom, like this. And I grabbed hold of him, his shirt like this, and I pushed him up against this thing and end the scene. And I said to him, Dad, I said, what the hell? I said, I thought you broke my jaw. What, what were you doing? He says, you think that's bad? Look at this. He reaches into his chest and pulls out a big wad of his hair that I had torn out of his, his chest when I grabbed his chest. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's called truth. That's a bit of yeah. truth there. Uh, well, they, they, you know, one of the opening parts of the project is that you well, okay, now that we've talked about this for a minute, now I'm going to play the trailer finally. Sorry, That's okay. but I'm going to play the trailer fi finally, and then we'll come back and talk about the human soul. I'm going to share the screen, find the trailer, yeah. and then we will be right back in about a minute or so. Let me just find the link right in front of me. There we go. It's technical fun day. This is always fun when you're doing your own tech. Enjoy. I just went up and knocked on his door. Yes, come in. I hear that you teach dramatic art. Well, I think what helps an actor and actress is to really partake in life and uh, be concerned about his fellow man, fellow, fellow gal. I think it makes better actors. Well, I remember working with Dad. He gave us that book, Acting for Six Lessons. The book that your grandfather, Zadie, gave me. I remember when he gave it to me. I made a commitment to fully participate in life, observe the world around me, and soak up every ounce of experience, no matter what. One thing remains, which cannot be developed, but must be present, and that is Talent. I learned that it's impossible to make that kind of commitment in a vacuum. It could be a very difficult problem. We find each other, all of us who've chosen this way of living and creating. We find our family. Acting is the life of the human soul receiving its birth through art. We take the lessons we've learned and we pass them on to the next generation. Cool. So, so now um, the audience has had a chance to see the trailer. If you haven't seen the film, okay. So, you know what I did? I forgot when we started this that this is part of the Fine Arts Film Festival 2021. Um, you guys will see it when you see the label on this. But we encourage you to go see this film. Um, it'll be playing until. February, excuse me, I've been doing that all year, June 14th, that's Tuesday. Um, anyway, um, you can find the details at bennettsica.org, click on find FAFF 2021, and you'll find all the details on this. So uh, one thing that's, uh, there was a question I was going to come to, but before I come to that question, uh, well, there, you know, Acting is a huge part of the human soul. In fact, it's acting out the human soul. But one of the th ways that we, um, I'm not an actor, but the, one of the ways we, we hope that our actors can get to where they need, they want to be for their own truth on, on whatever scene they're playing is, 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 is figuring out ways to put yourself in that physical world, whether it's a costume or a set or actually figuring out what you're gonna do with your body, your hands, your face. And one of the funny, fun parts about the movie is when you guys are sitting there with 
your uncle Jeff and he's like, hey, you know, I was trying to do this one part and I thought maybe it would, I was trying to show shock and he puts his hands on his face and he starts pulling his face <laughs> down like Edvard Munch in Edvard Munch, you know? And um, in the painting, the scream, he pulls his face down and then you guys do it. Um, and and, and it, well, I learned something from that moment, but it was, I just couldn't start, I couldn't stop laughing be just like you guys were. And I think it's great that you left it in the movie. So is that part of your experience growing up as an actor with your, uh, Bo with your dad or Emily with your dad uh, in terms of like how you would talk about it? Like, because that experience felt, felt like, like a game, a really fun game. So maybe talk a little bit around that kind of experience as a, you know, yeah, well, I, I can just uh, tell you that it was a lot of games played in our household, a lot of them acting games. Uh, and they were fun. But along with those, uh, my f father really spoke the truth about, you know, the tough side of, of show business. You know, I mean, I count myself so lucky that I had a father that was established as an actor and could help me get my first job. I mean, just that first job is almost impossible. There's yes, a lot of really, really talented people out there that can't get can't get that first gig. You know, once they get it, then it's up to them. Uh, and that's true whether you, you get uh, an opportunity provided to you or not. But uh, so he talked a lot about preparation. Uh, you know, he said, look, you know, there's only one person who gets the job. And there's a lot of people that want it. So you better be ready. And that's all in, that, in that opening scene when he lists all the stuff that an actor needs to have in their toolbox. You know, and that poor young creature just looking at him like, what are you talking about? Because so many people outside of the acting experience think it's just, you know, you just get in there and, you know, yap your lips and that's it. You know, try to look as nice as you can. <laughs> the a, yeah, the puppets. But there's a there's a lot going on to you know to get yourself ready. So when you get that opportunity, where uh, can you sing? Can you ride a horse? Yes, sir. You know if you can answer that, you're you're halfway there. Now, a lot of people say yes, sir, but they don't even know how to ride a horse. And then they have to get you know try to, to learn as fast as they can. So you you know it's I had a uh, my other mentor. Uh, was my basketball coach at UCLA, John Wooden. And he, oh, really? Favorite... I didn't know you did. Wooden was one of my idols. Oh, one of mine, too. And and he, coach used to say, you know, he had all those wonderful precepts. And one of them was uh, failing to prepare is preparing to fail. And be quick, but don't hurry. Make every day your masterpiece. I mean, he was a basketball coach, but he was a life coach as well. And just like this book has filled with all that kind of stuff. You know? Yeah, it's great. If it would, it's it would be. I think it's really important that we, um, as people, provide those kind of experiences for whoever we can. You know, I just recently turned sixty, so for me, um, uh, that was a kind of a bit of a milestone uh, because I usually feel like I'm sixteen. And um, so for me, it's been interesting, interesting development positively. Um, and I think one of the ways that you can figure out whether you've done your homework is if you try to give other people homework and, and teach them, mentor them and mm -hmm. work with them. And so um, I, you know, I think it's fantastic that you're doing that. Um, Emily, how do you feel about that? being a part of your film and your process in terms of being a mentor? Sure, I mean, I, th I think that, um, you know, in, ter in terms of being a mentor, I mean, I think that I was just around so many mentors, you know, we're, we're a family of not very shy people, as you can tell, and our, um, you know, I think that, that part of being a supportive family is that that people are not going to be shy about talking to you about stuff you know I remember my grandfather I would tell him you know oh, I'm I'm 
playing Alice in Wonderland in the school play and I'm in the third grade and he would go great sit down we'll work on it you know and <laughs> and and did you know like it and it wasn't mm -hmm. a joke it was very serious and uh and I think that that you know my dad brings up John Wooden and I think that both all of the Woodenisms and uh Boleslavsky's book sort of take up a similar space in my mind because it was very much in my formative years how we talked about preparation for anything um and so so that was part of it and um you know you you were talking about the the element of play that's in there as well and i it just made me think i wanted to bring up my grandmother who appears in the film there's um there's a wonderful interview that was originally used in uh, Frederick Keeve is the filmmaker and his film was called From Russia to Hollywood and uh, in it there is there is snippets from a conversation with my grandparents um, talking about their experience working with Michael Chekhov who's from this sort of same lineage that, that Boleslavsky comes from in terms of uh, bringing Stanislavsky's method west and and it was brilliant because they were talking about all of the same stuff that gets brought up in acting the first six lessons. And so it it was almost as if they had been interviewed for this film as well, which was uh, yeah. really special. But but because of that, you know, there's all kinds of things that were not germane to the film that it was originally recorded for, but for us was priceless. Things like my grandmother talking about all the weird little games that she would play, you know, with pretend with her grandchildren that that is that are games, but are really things to practice being aware and being present and your memory and you know all of those those sort of things that um, I don't think I realized as a kid wasn't typical, <laughs> like you know. Um, and it's something that I'm I'm very grateful for, and I, I try to do with with my little guy. Um, so you have a little one. I do. My my son Clark is two and a half. Oh, fantastic! Well, um, one of the things that um, you know, part of being a family or part of being part of a movie set, a movie crew, or you know, a whole team, um, or part of a community, is um, understanding. Uh, how to be a part of that community. And one of the things that it says in the movie, which I, you actually use at the end as well, I think you use it near the beginning um, as well in a different way, but it, you say the actor cannot portray the whole if she doesn't become a part of that. And so maybe, um, you know, we only have a couple of more minutes on our on our show. So maybe we can, since the, the, the movie is so much about how acting is a part of the human soul, maybe you guys can just each talk about that a little bit, how that feels to you personally and the process. Um, I don't know, I wish I could ask, ask, ask a more precise question, but I'm being philosophical and I feel like that's what the movie's about. So feel free to riff on that. <laughs> Well, I think that, uh, you know, what we do as actors, we tell stories. And this is as ancient as the hills. I mean, people sitting around a campfire telling stories has probably been around since humans first roamed the planet. And uh, just with the technology we have now, it's a different game. But it's just like the pageant wagons rolling in from the town around the bend telling people hear what's going on in that village over there. I mean, it's so important to communicate ideas. And, and that, I think that part of the process was what my father enjoyed the most about his profession was telling the stories mm -hmm. and exchanging the ideas. And, uh, and it all comes, uh, you know, when it's working well, it all comes uh, from a place of love, I think. Uh, the process of, of telling a story of making a film. And that's when it's, it has its best results, I believe. Uh, and that, I guess, is where respect comes in. You know, if you, if you come into a task with love and respect 
And as John Wooden said, you come in with industriousness, hard work, and joy. He said, because anyone could come to the table with hard work, but when you bring it with joy, that's when special things can happen. And then at the top of the pyramid of success that John Wooden created is game time, the pyramid, the apex. He divides that in half, faith and patience. And to coach, uh, success had nothing to do with winning. It had to do with leaving a task, knowing that you've done your very best. And then you can't lose, you know, just can't lose when you've done your very best. That's, Which like is such an important thing for actors to yeah. come away with because you get so much rejection that you yeah. can't possibly, you'll go insane if you put yeah. your barometer on, yeah. Yeah. on that. You don't need to measure yourself up against other actors or other people. You just go in there ready with all your preparation, you prepare as hard as you can and you leave it all out there. And, and that's all you can do. Yeah. Well, you know, I can't think of a better way to thank you guys for, uh, to and a better moment to thank you guys for being here, uh, because that statement is so true. And it's funny how so much of what you said today has paraphrased things that I've tried to say to people or tried to listen to people say this last several weeks for various reasons, and um, including, you know, we did our we're doing our best. We're, do, we do, we're doing everything we know how to do. And once we've yeah. done that, um, we can be proud of that um, because we know in our heart that we, we, we gave everything we could to other people. We gave everything we could to the project. And we, we were left with that self-awareness that self of, of, of that. Um, and, I, and I think that the, you know, acting the first six lessons is a really good uh, I think it's a really important movie for people who are studying acting to look at, and also people who are interested in what the film business is actually like in some ways. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of things that um, I would like to say more about it, but I would encourage everyone to watch um, Acting the First Six Lessons on the Fine Arts Film Festival 2021. And I wanna thank Bo Bridges for being here. Sir, thank you so much for honoring us with your visit. And Emily, thank you for directing this great movie and for honoring us with yours. I really appreciate what you both have said, and I wish you the best weekend possible. Thank, thank you. you. It's so too, great Jay. to be a part of, of your festival in Venice. And I say rowing, not drifting. Go Gondos. I'm a Venice High graduate. Oh, really? <laughs> Fantastic. That's so good to hear. <laughs> All right, well, listen, I, that's, that's good news for me. All right, well, as a, a, I will see you later, guys. Peace and uh, have a wonderful day. All right. Bye. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Bye.